Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Juma Mubarak to you all. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahi nahmaduhu, nasta'inuhu, nasta'ufiruhu, wa na'udhu billahi min shiruri anfusna wa min sayyati amalina, man yadihi allahu falamudilla lah, wa man yudlilhu falahadiyala, wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ahduhu la sharika lahu, wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All praises due to Allah from whom we seek help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil of our own souls and from those of our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray. And whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. Bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except Allah and that he is the one who has no partner. Now bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad is Allah's true servant and messenger. Ya ayuhal ladhina amanu attaqu Allah haqqa tukatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antu muslimun. O ye who believe, be mindful of Allah. Be mindful of Allah in the way that Allah deserves and do not die except in a state of full submission to Allah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa sili amri wa ahlu luqtata min lisani yafqa wa qawli. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'alabtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Bismillah. Again, assalamu alaikum to you all, uh, wishing you a blessed Juma today. And as we are getting ready to uh, welcome in the blessed month of the Vijja and the season of Hajj, um, we're entering uh, this within just a few days. Uh, you know, so we're uh, going into a very blessed time of the year, uh, just coming out of Ramadan not too long ago from the last 10 nights uh, where we were not too long back, and now heading into the uh, blessed 10 days of the first 10 days of the month of the Hijjah. Uh, and as I referred to in our tradition, as oftentimes as the best 10 days of the year. Uh, and our Prophet ﷺ had said that there are no days on which righteous deeds are more beloved to Allah than these 10 days, these first 10 days of the Hijjah. And so as I was thinking about these 10 days and and the different things that can be done on these 10 days, oftentimes we probably see different charities and different organizations, you know, ramp up their marketing and, and their outreach during this time, that this is a very blessed time. Uh, this is a time when deeds are, as we had just discussed, no more, uh, you know, pleased and beloved to Allah than these particular days. And so to amplify that giving, to multiply it, to, you know, do it in such a way that that it has not been done in any other part of the year. And when I was thinking about what exactly does charity within Islam, when we talk about it, we see charity in terms of zakat, we see sadaqah, we see all these different things that are there. Oftentimes we come to associate charity as just a monetary donation. We come to see charity and when we think about it in our minds, we just you know see a dollar sign or we just see currency and when we look at the uh, prophetic wisdoms about what charity is in terms of as an obligation and what, uh, how it's due or why it's due or what it looks like, we actually come to see that charity is not just a uh, dollar amount. It's not just a financial contribution. Charity is much, much more than that. And to be able to kind of see for those of us whether we have uh, an ample amount of financial resources or whether we are limited on our financial resources and may not have that to expend, being able to take a look at what do we have. So charity within Islam calls upon us to take a look at what do we have, even if we don't have financial wealth, what are other things that we can offer in terms of being considered as charitable contributions? And so the first hadith we will lift up here in this, in, uh, from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam lifts up that charity is a duty upon every Muslim. And so the people had responded. They said, uh, so the Prophet said, what if that person has nothing? And the Prophet responded that that person should then work with their hands to benefit themselves and to then give in charity. And they said, what if they can't do that? And the Prophet responded that then they should help a depressed and needy person. And they said, well, what if they can't do that either? And the Prophet said, then they should enjoin in goodness and virtue. And even in that one, they responded that they they responded that what if they can't do that either? And the Prophet ﷺ had responded, then they should refrain from evil, for that will be their charity. 
So being able to take a look at how the people at the time of the prophet, he's not preaching to a very wealthy crowd. And you know, there's a few folks here and there who will be fairly well off and who will have a lot to give. But largely in terms of the people who he's preaching to, you know, these are folks who don't have much other than what's on the on, on their backs, the clothes on their backs. And so when he lifts up that charity is a duty upon every Muslim, giving is a duty upon every Muslim. He goes to, to each of them and is able to uh, connect with them in a way that explains for them as well as for us now how charity in Islam is not just limited to that monetary value. It's something beyond that. So he lifts up that if the uh, at that a charity is a person or charity is a duty upon every Muslim. And if that person does not have the financial charity or does not have the, the monetary means to make that contribution, then that person should start to work with their hands. They should, they should get to, they should get to um, work in a different way that they can benefit themselves, they can feed their family, they can do what they need to get done, and then they're able to then give that charity. But if they're not able to do that, they should go help a uh, someone who may be depressed, someone who may be in need, and address whatever their needs may be. And it doesn't have to be making their problems go away with money, but going and checking on someone, seeing how they're doing, if they're not, uh, you know, uh, if they're not showing up in terms of other events, or if they're not present, uh, being able to inquire about the needs of other people. And then if they can't even do that, to just enjoin in that which is good. And uh, it's just virtue. Our, our tradition, our process on teach us that smiling is a form of charity. So just being a good, positive person to somebody else. And then the process of said, if somebody can't even do that, to just refrain from doing evil for that will be their charity. And he lifts up in another uh, hadith, another saying that um, the son of Adam has 360 joints and charity is due upon each of them every day. And a kind word that someone speaks is charity. A person helping their brother with something is charity. Giving someone a drink of water is charity. Removing harmful things from the road is charity. So thinking about, he's, he's not just, again, speaking to people who uh, have a uh, huge 401k or like have all these different, uh, you know, things at their disposal to be able to then uh, allow them to contribute huge amounts of financial donation or, you know, be really rolling with respect to all the different monetary contributions they can make but people who have very, very limited resources. And so as he's speaking, he's sharing with them the different ways they can participate and they can fulfill this obligation of faith of being charitable. And, you know, when, when we look at this aspect of being charitable, this concept as well comes to that we, we sometimes feel that by giving this charity, we are just fulfilling an obligation of faith. And there's so much more to that, because it's not just a, a simple ritual. It's not just a simple deed that is just uh, to be crossed off once we understand it as a part of faith. But as Prophet Sosam had taught and had lifted up when asked, which of the deeds are best, which kinds of deeds are best? And we're we just started this clip by child talking about how the process of said that there are no days on which righteous and good deeds are more beloved to Allah than the first 10 days of the Hijjah. And when he's asked about which deeds are best, the Prophet of responded to bring happiness to a believer, to satisfy their hunger, to clothe their nakedness, and to or to fulfill their needs. So some of these things, you know, in a sense, may not be able to uh, be provided by a financial contribution or a monetary contribution, bringing happiness to a believer. We often have times have that saying, "Money can't buy happiness." But to bring a happy, to bring happiness to a believer, especially if the person who is being addressed in these hadith, in these sayings, are those who don't have much to give, but to bring happiness to somebody, to satisfy their hunger, to clothe their someone's nakedness, to help fulfill their needs, it requires getting to know that person. Uh, I can't just go and immediately provide happiness to somebody, I can probably help make somebody content, but can't really provide true happiness to someone unless we really meet their need in a way that, that they are needing. Um, we can't really satisfy their hunger unless we know what their hunger is and then being able to meet them where they are or to clothe their nakedness or to fulfill their needs. We don't know what their needs are unless we sit and we ask them um, apart from just assuming what their needs are. We go and we talk to them. And so this goes into a very interesting concept that I came across in a TED talk that was given by uh, a, a Canadian, um, Elizabeth Dunn, and, and her studies that she, she's been you know, doing research on this. And she 
help to correlate and, and show that the effects of charity, that people who gave in charity uh, across a survey over 200,000 people were statistically more happier than those who did not give in charity, who did not. So charity being correlated with this aspect of happiness, and uh, it was almost on a very similar correlation as people having twice as much income. So if they were to have twice as much income, uh, they would report pretty much the same kind of levels of happiness as if they were giving in charity. And so this aspect of giving in charity, even if they didn't have twice as much income, it, it was even more than uh, than having that because of the fact that there was there was this element of giving that was involved. There was this element of being able to participate. So uh, having that same kind of correlation that that our tradition tells us that it's not about the money. It's not about chasing, you know, having more and more and more wealth. Getting that kind of happiness does not come from this. Getting that kind of happiness comes from being able to extend the giving hand, being able to extend the helping hand. And we see this in the statistical research that shows this. Uh, and the benefits of charity being felt, not just when people just make a donation or a contribution, but when they feel a real sense of connection to those they help. So she was talking about how people will sometimes just swipe a credit card or sometimes enter their credit card, do, do an annual giving or a monthly giving or whatever, uh, but they feel more to be a sense of an obligation rather than a sense of uh, wanting to actually do it, a sense of uh, fulfillment. And they noted it in their study that uh, people really felt a genuine connection and, and a change in their emotion and uh, a more positive feedback from it when they actually felt a connection to those who they helped. So not just you know putting a, a check or putting a card to a big charity and nothing wrong with that. Of course, they're, they're doing great work, but not just in terms of just putting a card to a charity and just thinking that, okay, we've, we've done our duty, um, but feeling with respect to who they can connect to. They, there's a finding a joy in giving and, and you know spending money was not just linked to happiness. It was not just like how much we spent was linked exact to our happiness, but how we were able to contribute, how we were able to give of that which we, which we held on to, but also who we gave it to, who did we connect with. And seeing that charity, in a sense, was not just about money. Uh, charity was about the appreciation of our shared humanity and being able to go beyond the differences and being able to help someone else in their needs and help to fulfill their needs. Um, and that is not just an obligation, but it's actually a source of human fulfillment. And as we had just mentioned in the preceding hadith, that the best deeds are those which bring happiness and they fulfill their needs. You can see on the other side of things that to bring happiness to a believer, to satisfy their hunger, to clothe their nakedness, to fulfill their needs. This isn't just with respect to us giving to them or one person giving to another, but there's a mutual exchange, especially when it's done with connection. When you get to know someone, there is a fulfillment in terms of the obligations of faith on both ends. That you may be bringing happiness to somebody by helping them with something. You may be helping to satisfy a hunger of theirs. You may be helping satisfy a shortage of theirs or a fulfillment of theirs. But on the same end, if you are doing that with a sincere sense of connection, you're happy that you are also finding a uh, way of becoming happy. You are deriving happiness from it. Your hunger is also being satisfied in some way, even not, maybe not literal, but another hunger. You're, uh, you are being clothed in different ways. You are being shaded in different ways, and you're being fulfilled in different ways. So seeing this as not just a top-down, trickle-down transaction, but something as a mutual exchange in which one person is helping another, but the other person is also helping that person. And when we think about what are we getting out of charity? What are we getting out of giving? Because um, oftentimes in this society, we are seeing that, hey, we're giving to people, we're giving to other things, but you're not getting anything back, right? You, you may get something to deduct on your taxes when come tax season, but you're not getting, if I you know contribute $10 in charity automatically the next day in my bank account, I don't have $20 that pop up. Uh, you are uh, giving and it probably doesn't in this time, you know, come back to you in different ways. And so it's it's it sometimes feels like a complete one-way street or, hey, I'm going to go help build someone a home. I'm, I'm not going to come back and a home, a second home is built for me or anything like that. So we, we sometimes have these odd expectations in terms of when we give, we can, we want to expect some more back, or we're, we're in a society that uh, oftentimes promotes this kind of thinking with respect to putting our money, putting our resources in that, which can only then benefit us or uh, be worthwhile for us or for our bank accounts. And the Prophet lifted up that the, uh, 
the servant of Allah says, my wealth, my wealth. And verily, he gets only three things from his wealth. The, uh, that he eats it and it perishes, or that he wears his clothes that he bought and they degrade, or that he gives in charity and it is stored for him. Whatever is beyond this will depart him and be left behind for people. So the Prophet ﷺ lifts up that how our human nature is sometimes tied to or we get tied to the financial aspects of our uh, giving and or just our, our wealth in general. And so we get concerned of our wealth, our wealth, but we only get three things that we, we spend it and it goes away, um, that we buy other things and that they those things also disintegrate and they will not survive the test of time or that we give it in charity. <clears throat> And give it in charity. We give, uh, and not just wealth, again, in terms of financial, but resources, all these other things that giving something in charity, and that is stored for them. And that whenever we make a deposit, whenever we make some kind of contribution with respect, with the charitable hand, with respect to giving this forward, that it's not going to just perish immediately like the other things in this world that we spend our money on, that we spend our resources on, that it's actually stored for us in the life to come. So we might not see it being deposited here. We might not see our bank account going up here, but in the Akhirah, it is one that is being uh, increased based on how much we are giving. And the Prophet lifted up that everyone will be in the shade of their charity until judgment is carried out between the people on the day of judgment, that all people uh, who are in the shade will be provided that shade uh, as part of their charity. So thinking about how one with respect to our uh, reflection on charity beyond the financial means. When we think about charity, we think about that which we give from ourselves, but it's not just limited to uh, something that is monetary. And whether we have the means for it or whether we don't, we see ourselves as Muslims, as those who are able to give with respect to anything that it can be, but we reflect on what are we able to give. Because at the end of the day, the process I'm also lifted up that how charity of someone who is poor is uh, weighted more than someone who is wealthy in a sense that uh, if somebody who's poor was just to give two coins and or like one coin to a charitable cause versus uh, a very wealthy person who's to give a hundred or a thousand coins that the person who gave that one coin it would be a much more uh, significant endeavor because of the fact that it it was it was it was within their means, it was more difficult to give what was maybe half of their income versus for this other person, it was maybe just some change on the side, even though it's so much. So uh, charity being that which does require us to stretch a little bit, which does require us to go into a little bit of discomfort, but again, not limited to the monetary aspect. Going into a space where we are able to sit with people, we are able to do things that may feel uncomfortable, but do have an impact to go on. The Prophet of as we said, he'd it lifted up that giving someone a drink of water is charity, removing harmful things from the road is charity, helping someone with their need is charity, uh, a kind word is charity. All of these things that the process I'm lifted up, none of that is monetary, but just thinking about when we're driving on the road, when we are going anywhere, we're walking uh, on the in a park or whatnot, we might see a piece of trash on the side. We might see an object obstructing the road. We may see someone in need in a hot summer day on the side. We might see someone who is in need of something else, but how often do we just drive by? Do we just keep going by? How often do we keep walking by? Because we feel it may be awkward that if we stop our car and we're gonna now get this trash or it's gonna be awkward if I do that, or uh, I, you know, someone else will take care of it. Or you know, I'm just gonna pray that that person gets a drink of water when I have you know, a Starbucks, <laughs> you know, just giant uh, venti like drink here. Like just, just thinking about like, what, what are all the means that we have? You know, a, a person is, very much mindful in, in the state of charity within Islam, that even if they don't have the financial means to do something, at the least they can offer a smile, at the least they can do something beyond those financial means to just check with that person what their needs may be, what, what, where, where they may be with respect to maybe their hunger, with respect to anything that they uh, might be needing at that moment as a way to help bring happiness to the person, especially inshallah, as we go into these days of the hijjah to be able to take a look at what are those things um, that we can do that are uh, those deeds that beyond any of the financial aspects, beyond any of the monetary aspects, to look at the deeds that we can do, especially to help those who are in need uh, as a way for us 
to be able to amplify them, but be able to recognize what all do we really have at our at our disposal when it comes to helping someone else. We may have so much ability that we have just looked over because we feel that we are not able to give a lot in charity because of our financial background. But regardless of that, our tradition lifts up for us and calls for us to recognize the blessings that Allah has given us, the blessings that Allah has given us in our abilities and all these other ways to truly be able to help someone uh, in terms of bringing happiness to them. And when we see with respect to the research that's done, when we endeavor into this charity and make it a meaningful endeavor, we, we see, do this charity as a way to connect, as a way that we find joy in this. We, we find uh, what really gives us meaning and is really something that uh, we feel passionate about it subsequently gives us that back in terms of happiness. It gives us a satisfaction in terms of hunger. It's a giving for ourselves, And of course, within our tradition, that this is something that we might be spending on and giving our time to or whatnot. And it may not uh, result in any reciprocation in this life, but in the next life, it is being tallied up and is being added to multiplied and inshallah providing shade for us in a time when we need it the most. So may Allah enable us to be a people of charity. May Allah be a, uh, enable us to be a people that recognize which kinds of charity we have at our disposal and to allow us to be those who extend that charitable arm, whatever it looks like, whether it's writing checks, whether it's actually going out and doing different kinds of works, or whether it's going into the rut and being able to pull the trash or do the things that are the difficult things to be a, to be those people that our Prophet Sallallahu had lifted us to be as an obligation of our faith, as well as a source for us to fulfill our humanity. And may Allah enable us to allow this, uh, allow us to leave this Jamaah, inshallah, better than we came to it and allow us to leave every place better than we came to it and, and, and enter it. Rabbana taqabal minna inna kanta simhil alim. Our Lord, accept this humble service from us. And he, indeed, thou art all hearing. Amen. And Jazakallah, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.